Hi, everyone out there in the big wide world. Let me tell you, I've woken up today and you know how happy I am. I've got Tony Kishman with me, right? Musician extraordinaire, played on Beatlemania. The guy's got his own show. He's just amazing with what he does. And Tony, if you've got a song for us, let's hear it. <laughs> Every day she takes a morning, now she wets her hair. Wraps a towel around her head, she's heading for the bedroom chair. It's just another day. Slipping in the stockings, stepping in the shoes, dipping in the pocket of the raincoats. Whoa, it's just another day. It's just another day. It's just another day. Oh, yeah. Tell you what, the world's rocking today. Let me tell you, just in your honor, I've got my cup of coffee here because it's morning, right? It's like 9 a.m. But not yeah. only that, Tony. I'm wearing my Beatles T-shirt just for this interview. How great's that? There you go. Uh, way to go, man. <laughs> now, let me tell you, I want everyone to watch this, uh, your latest video clip promotion. I've never seen like it. It's blown me away. It's just so amazing. You. you look like Sir Paul. You sound like Sir Paul. Let's watch that <laughs> right now. It's a river lamp die. Tell me about that clip and tell me about your show and everywhere it is at the moment, Tony, and where they can get tickets. Well, you know, the um, that's a, a, a recent promotional. We did the entire uh, show. We have filmed the whole show. It was a 90-minute show. We did it in um, New Jersey at the Lavoy Theater uh, with the full orchestra, four-piece four band behind me, and uh, conductor Martin Herman. And it was it was a fantastic night to finally get that new version of the show down on film. And uh, there's been some, you know, sizzle reels made from that that video. And the actual full video is finished and out ready to go. So we may ha have it come out on PBS and maybe some other places. But um, it was just a lot of fun to do. We, um, you know, we had the cameras in the audience and. We just rocked it out. We did it, you know. So we're playing uh, this this next show we're doing 
October uh, 6th in um, Las Cruces, New Mexico. <clears throat> we're doing the show there with Lonnie Klein, conductor. And um, we're doing the following uh, show is October 22nd is going to be in Rome, New York at the Capitol Theater. Uh, again, full symphony show. And uh, the following that, we're doing a few five-piece shows, November 4 and 5 in Connecticut. And then again, uh, five-piece show, November 19th in Orange Blossom Caf uh, Opry House in, um, in Weirsdale, Florida. And then at the end of November, we're doing a show at the um, Gateway Playhouse, two nights uh, with the orchestra. So a lot of shows with the orchestra coming up, which are a lot of fun to do. Well, let me tell you, everyone on in the U.S., I'll be telling them as well. But now when you look back at your fascinating career, right, I want you to tell me what it was like when they first got you for Beatlemania, being one of the shows of the time, and how long you were with the show, and how this, like, changed your life, because it really did. I mean, you look where you started Beatlemania, and look where you are now. And, like, the yeah. journey is writing new chapters for you. I mean, how amazing <laughs> is that? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I, When I first started doing the Beatlemania show, um, I was cast in the show. I had no idea that I could do it. And that there were a lot of good people pushing me to say, you can do it and you can do it. And I did audition for the show a few times. I wasn't selected right away because I had to really know what I was doing. They had to believe in me. And they, they kept saying, you can do it, but you got to really work on the songs. And uh, so I did. I worked hard. And once I got selected for the show, we toured. We went all over the U.S., uh, it was the Broadway show that we toured, and um, the show lasted a good five years of us all over the country, ending up in London, where I met George Martin, um, where, you know, we did some amazing th shows in front of big rock stars, and, you know, people that came to the show would be, you know, you'd be doing the show, and all of a sudden, you know, the monkeys are sitting out there, or... You play in the show and you hear, oh, well, Fleetwood Mac is in the audience. Or, you know, and, and you're just, it blows your mind as a, as a young guy, you know what I mean? And you're saying, well, I'm up here imitating Paul McCartney. I'm not him, right? But it was such a cool presentation to bring the Beatles to life, you know, the way we did. And, um, and so I, I look back at it as being a majorly professional um special time to do it you know and well, then say so Beatlemania is huge and they put that album out and I mean you think about it it's probably one of the greatest shows that ever came out on stage on the Beatles as far as I'm concerned because it's yeah. timeless now when you look back at it aren't, isn't it sure well it was a first of its kind you know it's it's easy now to look back and you, and you say well we could pick holes in it or we could uh, say things that weren't great or whatever. But you got to remember, it was the 70s, you know, it was like late 70s. And uh, no one had ever imitated another band at that time. So it was, an, it was the first time anybody would go, I'm going to imitate a rock star. And, and it happened to be the Beatles. And it happened to be a big presentation on the Beatles. So needless to say, when, when I was in the show, I, I felt like I was a, like a millionaire. You know, I felt like what I wasn't, but <laughs> I felt like just this guy that just was on top of the world. And I was really, I knew that I was really being, eye, you know, eyeballed with, with this character. And I had to really sing like him or I had to really play like him. It was all about the music and acting the role. It was a music acting role, you know, presentation. And all of the Beatle guys that were in the show, there were several Pauls, several Georges, several Johns, as we know. And um, every one of those people were scrutinized and had to be really focused. And if they didn't do it, they knew it. 
you know. So it was a thing of, you know, you had to really, really know what you were doing. And once it was over, I thought, well, I'm done now. Now what am I going to do? And the phone kept ringing. Like, you know, we're doing a Beatles show. Can you be Paul in it? And I would go, well, that, that sounds great, you know. And it happened year after year after year. And I never stopped doing the Beatles after Beatlemania. So then when about uh, 2006 came around, I thought, well, maybe I should do a solo McCartney show because no one is doing it. I figured I'll, I'll be one of the first, if anything. So I started doing it, and I did it right away with the orchestra. So I didn't just go out and play Paul. I went out and played Paul in front of an orchestra. So it made it a big deal to me, you know, to really do it right, bringing songs on that played out all of the orchestration. So I think that's what was fun about continuing the show and continuing playing Paul. But you know the yeah. amazing thing? you got to have a love for the Beatles. That's the first thing. Second yeah. thing, you've got to have a love for Paul because you're playing Paul. And the third thing is you have to work on his music. Yeah. Get it to a standard that's like as close to Paul's standard as you can. And when right. you see you on stage now, I'm saying in 2022, 20, I mean, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, you know, like, this is, how can I say? It's just such a close show to Paul's show. It's like, yeah. I'm not lying to you. When I saw... Your new promo, it, it's it sucked me in to the world no. of support. Even though it's Tony right. Kishman, you switch off. And when yeah. you're on the stage, you look like him. You sound like him. It's like you think <laughs> you're there. And it's totally blown my mind since I've seen that promo. And I, I mean that sincerely. Cool, cool. Well, you know, I try. I try to do just that, Plastic. You know, it's a, it's a role that, you know, I'm... I want people to escape, if you will. When they're in the audience, you're, you're saying, um, you know, I'm not just playing, you know, any old song. I'm playing Paul McCartney's songs. And we're, spe we're a specialty act, you know, where we really want to be exact like he did it or does it. And I'm lucky because I have a great band that can deliver those songs. The guys, John Murjavi, Chris Holt. Tommy Williams, Paul Averett, you know, uh, Brad Swigger, these guys, you know, Andrew Loveman, Ar Arna Wendt, these are guys that we've seen in other bands like with Don Henley, Bon Jovi, um, you know, uh, Max Weinberg. These guys work with the greatest musicians in the world, and uh, they happen to be in the show. So I kind of look to my left and I see the, a phenomenal musician next to me. I mean, Chris and, and John and these guys, they're great. And so it makes me relax. And I say, now I can be Paul because I know all of the music is coming off the stage just like he wrote it. It's not like we're taking liberties to jam and play our own music or our own notes. You know, it's what he wrote and, and delivered on those records. And that's the fun part of it. I'm doing it like he did it is really the key to it. Now, Tony, I need to ask you, tell me about some of these bands in the 60s that were a big influence on your musical career. Well, I loved the Turtles. I was, uh, I was, I, I loved Happy Together. Great, great song, you know. Um, I liked Ohio Express, Yummy, Yummy, you know. I love songs like that. I was just really amazed with that. Of course, you know, uh, you know, I have to say Rolling Stones because, you know, the Stones blew me away. They, Mick Jagger was like, oh, my God, what is this? You know, so, you know, songs like Ruby Tuesday. Wow. It was so amazing. And my, one of my all time favorite Stones, Give Me Shelter. When he when you know, Mick Jagger singing Gimme Shelter and that whole intro with the, ooh, you know, I mean, it's just a killer. Uh, aside from the Beatles, you know, and of course the monkeys. I mean, the monkeys were the, one of the biggest things ever uh, as a kid. Um, what song? I would say, uh, well, you know, uh, 
you know, daydream believer and, uh, you know, and working with Mickey, by the way, uh, I worked with him in an orchestra show in the, the Bass Hall in um, probably 2009 or 10. And we did a show with Mickey Dolence. It was really fun. And by the way, I am going to do um, a show with Mickey Dolence, uh, Abbey Road on the River, coming up next year, May 26, 7, 8, 9, whatever. Uh, Abbey Road on the River, Mickey Dolence will be there, and, and we're doing our full show there. Anyway, now let's get into 2022. And yeah. I'm just saying, how do you feel, Tony? They entertain the world at this particular time. And after COVID, people are dying out to go and see shows and you're out there yeah. and you're like bringing it to the people. That's what I really admire. I, I think it's just a great thing. I mean, it was real hard on all of us, um, COVID, but now we're back in, uh, in the airplanes. We're flying. We're doing shows all around the country. We're back in, you know, I would say back in pretty full swing. Um, and especially what's coming up, which is good. Um, shows are, you know, they're getting lined up and they're getting, they're, they're falling into place. And I'm, it's, it's just great. Yeah. I mean, people are coming to the shows. Um, some people are still wearing masks, which is fine. And even on planes, you don't have to wear them anymore, but some people still do, which is fine, you know? And um, I've been one of those guys that says, I'm not wearing the mask anymore. I'm vaccinated. I'm going to go for it. And COVID is behind me, you know, so that's where I'm at. I, I just putting it behind me. So it's really great. And, and this show has never been tighter. And I don't think it's ever been better than it is now. I think vocally we're strong and um, musically, it's just been a real pleasure bringing live and let die to the people. It really is great. You I've know, got to ask you, any plans to come to Australia? That's what I'm wanting so I can meet up. I've had a lot of people ask me to come there. Um, and I'd have to say it's possible. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of leery of flying that far. I do have a young, as you know, Emery here. Um, but I'm real busy in the States. So, I mean... If we can find a spot to do it, yes, I'd love to come to Melbourne. I'd love to see you there. And uh, Sydney would be great. I mean, all the big cities across the West Coast, you know, I mean, East Coast, um, which I've done before. And I'd love to do it again. So, um, yeah, it's a very strong possibility. When was the last so, time you were in Australia? I think it was um, probably 10 to 12 years ago. Now, maybe a little further, maybe 14 years ago. Well, let me tell you, Vicky and I will be coming to see your show. Don't worry about that. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I would love to do it. No kidding. I, I've i got some promoters there that have been calling me and wanting to do a show, and I just keep saying, well, let's, let's play it by ear. Let's see, you know, and uh, see if we can find a schedule to do it. Because once you're there, you want to be there a minute. Yeah, you well, know? if you come to Crown Casino, you're going to love it. But I'm going to say, growing up and your musical influences, did, who was your favorite Beatle in 1964? Well, I, I was always, and I know this sounds crazy, but I always liked Paul because I just thought he was cool. I thought he had a great look. Um, I never thought of it imitating him in a show or playing him or anything. But I did really like him, and I was, so, uh, uh, you know, a fond of George Harrison because I liked his guitar playing and so forth. But, um, yeah. I just want to <laughs> say, you've got your daughter in the background. Would you like to introduce her to the people? Yes. Let's say hello to Emery. Come here. And let's just say hello to Plastic, okay? She's, um, she sings. Now, one of her favorite songs, believe it or not, is, well, Plastic, you're not going to believe this. She sings yesterday. Like this. See? Can you sing yesterday? Like this. Go like this. Yesterday. Can you do it? She sings the long and winding road. She sings yesterday, all of my trouble. She also sings, I love you. 
I love you. She's amazing. <laughs> That's all I want to say. How old is she? Yeah. She's two. That's that's even more amazing. That she's <laughs> she's following her dad. Sing? She sings really good. She's catching on. She's got good pitch, and she sings yummy, yummy, yummy. I got love in my tummy, and I feel like loving you. That's one of my favorite songs. I'll tell you that, Tony. I know it's years. so funny. Yeah, she um she sings everything I'm singing. She starts singing it, you know. Like she the other day she went the long and winding road and then she just took her hands and went, you know, for the chords. Boom yeah. boom. So funny. And I'm thinking she's two. You know, how does she know this? It's too young. But you know, I'm I'm singing around the house or whatever, and she sees that she's seen the show a few times. She must have so a new for Leah. She does. She has to. I mean, I think it's just because she hears it so much, too, you know. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun, though. Yeah, Tony, just tell everyone where they can get tickets to your show. And I want to thank you for being on uh, today and entertaining a lot of people. Well, my website is liveandletdieshow.com. And everything that you need to know about Live and Let Die and Tony Kishman and whatnot is on that website. So liveandletdieshow.com. <laughs> And all of my shows are there. The links are there and everything. So it's really cool that I that you had me on, Plastic. It's always good to see you. Thank you again for having me.